All right, everybody, welcome to the TV show. I am Brian Lee Durfee, author of The Forgetting Moon and The Blackest Heart, both books published by Simon & Schuster's Saga Press. Today, I'm going to be reviewing Iron Lake by William Kent Kruger. This is his first book in the Cork O'Connell mystery series that's set in Minnesota. Um, Now, perhaps you saw my review yesterday of William Kent Kruger's novel uh, Ordinary Grace. It was one of the better books I've read this year. I just absolutely loved it. And I immediately went to the bookstore once I finished that to get this book, and I read this book last night. And uh, because I just, I think this guy's a really, really talented writer. Ordinary Grace was just so good. And I wanted to, you know, I I read Ordinary Grace because it was a standalone book. And I wanted to read that before I launched into a 20, because there are 20 books in this Cork O'Connor series. So that's a big investment, which I'm probably going to get them all because I really like this. So let's just start with the cover, because you know I like graphic design and cover artwork. I think this is pretty simple yet elegant. It's uh, got a cold Minnesota winter scene, a frozen lake. I'm assuming it's Iron Lake. The uh, graphic design all around is pretty good. Uh, Can't give it any uh, negatives. So good job on the graphic design. And I also happen to know that um, the publisher, which is Atria, which is a pretty well-known publisher, they... All the books in the Cork O'Connell series seem to have the same design to them. So I think once I get the entire set, it's going to look pretty dope on the shelf. And that's what we care about mostly, is we want our books to look awesome when they're on our bookshelves. Because those of us that have libraries of 5,000 books or more, We want stuff to look pretty decent, you know. Anyway, let's talk about this. Cork O'Connor. He's half Irish, half Anishinaabe Indian. Assuming that's a tribe of Indians in the uh, Minnesota area. Uh, Normally I Google this stuff. Also, it takes place in Aurora, Minnesota. Normally I would Google Aurora, Minnesota to see if it actually exists. And if that tribe actually exists, I'm just taking it for granted that the tribe actually exists and that Aurora, I mean, there's an Aurora in every state in the United States. So there's got to be one in Minnesota too. Anyway, this came out in 1998. We meet our guy, a former sheriff. He's the former sheriff of Aurora. He's also a former cop on Chicago's South side. So then I was wondering, well, how old is this guy? Cause he's retired from that stuff. Like, how old is this guy? Well, we get a great prologue that is set in the year 1965, and Cork O'Connell is O'Connor. O'Connell? Let me see if it's O'Connell or Connor. I don't know. His first name's Cork. Anyway, I get that mixed up. Cork O'Connell, Cork O'Connor. It's one of the two. The dude was 10 years old in the prologue. This is just a very lyrical... uh, beautifully written prologue about a bear hunt and Cork is a 10 year old kid and he's on a bear hunt with his sort of Native American mentor, a fellow named Sam Wintermoon. And so he's 10 years old in 1965, which in 1998, if I did my math correct, would make him 43 years old in 1998 when this book takes place. Although even though the prologue takes place in 1965, The rest of the book takes place in 1998, so it's 43, I think. Could be 33. You people do 10 years old in 1965. Book takes place in 1998. I think that's 43 years. So he's 43 years old. He's got a um, daughter. uh, He's got a daughter who, uh, let's see, an Annie is uh, one of the daughters. Um, he's got a son, Stevie, who's five, another daughter who's 14 named Jenny, 
He's got a, um, he's separated from his wife, whose name is Joe. He's got a girlfriend, though, named Molly. So his family structure is kind of convoluted. He's got a few things going wrong on the domestic side. Not, I mean, you know I love the C.J. Box books because Joe Pickett and his family is one of the main reasons people read that book is just, just the family drama that goes along with all those mysteries in the C.J. Box book. But the um, C.J. Box character, Joe Pickett, has a successful marriage and a loving family and he doesn't have girlfriends on the side and he's just a stand-up guy well this cork o'connell kirk cork o'connor seems to be uh, a little bit more troubled than joe pickett um so he's got a girlfriend and he's, and he's separated from his wife and he's got marital troubles you know it happens it happens anyway it's just a great sort of introduction to all the characters and um I have a feeling we're going to be following all of those characters through the 20 book series, much like we follow uh, Joe Pickett's family through the CJ Box um, Joe Pickett series. So I'm looking forward to that. So the book starts out with the prologue when Cork is 10 and he's on the bear hunt. And then we jump to 1998 and we get to meet a... A young guy named Paul LeBeau, who's a middle school kid, he's a Boy Scout, and he has a paper route. And as he's doing his paper route, he's sort of thinking about Boy Scouts, and he mentions that he's in a part of the Boy Scout club called Order of the Arrow. I went through the Order of the Arrow. I'm telling you, there's not a worse organization on the planet than the fucking Order of the Arrow perverts. Um, when I went through the Order of the Arrow... This is the way it was. It's, just, it's a part of the Boy Scouts, and I wish the Boy Scout organization would just... Maybe it's already died a pathetic death, but I just hope... But in the Order of the Arrow, this is what they did. They took young teen boys, they made them... And this is completely inappropriate. On so many levels, they would make these young boys dress as Native American Indians in nothing but loincloths and Indian paint and Indian garb. And keep in mind, we are white kids. We're just kids, and they would, and and then we would do slave labor for three days out in the wilderness. I remember the slave labor that they made us do in nothing but loincloths was um, build a rock, uh, build a trail through the woods uh, with rock, and we'd clear the clear the lumber out, or clear the fallen trees. It's just it's like a big service project with a bunch of old men watching young teenage boys and nothing but loincloths work like slaves. And it was just a ma massively inappropriate and completely stupid. I hated every second of it. I complained. I, I like, I just, I know that the, the kid that I was bunking with during the time, I know he was, he was in tears every night. And I don't think it was because of the hard work. I think it was because, I think it was because the Boy Scout Masters of the Order of the Arrow. I think it's just, I think it's a pedophile ring. Probably get I'll probably get demonetized for that. I don't know why, but when I read The Order of the Arrow in this book, it just triggered all those memories of just... just It was just such a bad idea. And I don't think you could do it in, in today's day and age. It's just a bad idea. But anyway, that's a minor part of this story. Um, and maybe I'll edit all that out. But anyway... What happens to Paul LeBeau, the middle-aged kid, middle middle school kid, on his uh, trip, as he's um, he well he didn't experience anything bad in the Order of the Arrow, but um, not unlike the experiences that I had, but um, the kid on his paper route fi finds uh, the judge of the town is dead. He's uh, committed suicide. Or so people think. And so, but then the kid goes missing himself. So now we've got a dead judge that is, it look, the murder looks like it's been a suicide, and we've got a missing young boy. And that's pretty much the, um, the mystery, the plot of the whole thing set up right there. I won't get into more of it than that because, you know, no reason to. Because the plot just takes, you know, all of its twists and turns. I'll, I'll just read this, um... Part, part Irish, part Indian, Cork O'Connor is the former sheriff of Aurora, Minnesota, population 3,700. And once a cop on Chicago's south side, there's not much that can shock him, but when the town's judge is brutally murdered and a young Eagle Scout is reported missing, Cork takes 
on this complicated and perplexing case of conspiracy corruption and a small town secret that hits painfully close to home. So anyway, I liked it. I liked it. I liked Ordinary Grace a lot more. I, I, I think if there was only one small criticism I would have of this book is, I wish it was just a little more gritty, a little bit more, um, I wish it just had a little bit more R-rated flavor to it. Um, that's a minor quibble to an otherwise perfect book. I'm going to give this a 9.5 out of 10. I think it's a great start to a possibly a great new mystery series that I found. And, you know, that's that.